The Houston Rockets are about to start a very, very important offseason for themselves. They have the number four pick in this year's draft, yet again drafting in the top five, and they have a little bit of cap space to play around with, uh, as well as a few key free agents. So today we're going to be talking about my perfect offseason for the Rockets. If I was a Rockets GM, this is exactly what I would do. Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, you got a good young guard duo. They also drafted the top player on my board in last year's draft in Jabari Smith Jr., although he didn't have the greatest year in the world. So we're going to be looking at uh, what the Rockets should do. So make sure you hit the like button, leave me a comment, and stick around for the full video if you did enjoy, and if you do enjoy at any point. So let's go ahead and get started looking at the offseason outlook, the offseason guide. And like I said, They've got the number four pick in this year's NBA draft. They also have pick number 19. Uh, I said they have a little bit of cap space, obviously being a bit sarcastic there. They have $66 million worth of cap space to play with. That is quite impressive. Uh, their key free agents, Jalen Green, Alfred Singun, Yuzma Garuba, and Josh Christopher, all of which they have a team option on. So, I mean, obviously, you can go out, you can try and get a big free agent, and then you bring all those guys back. In the draft, you're looking at Amin Thompson. Can they get him? He's my number four prospect right now, and honestly, I think he's going to fall to four. Six foot seven super athlete. There have been rumors that the Rockets had Amin Thompson ahead of Scoot Henderson on their draft board, which would be outlandish if true. But, hey, they would still get the best point guard on their board if a man falls to them. Great passer, great defender. Like I said, I've got him at number four on my draft board. That's kind of consensus. I've got him a lot higher than I have his brother uh, just because he is a true point guard. Neither one of them can really shoot the ball too well. I mean, I guess Azor, he's better than a man, but he's still not the best shooter in the world. The backup plan would be Azor or Cam Whitmore. Um... Now, maybe you bring in a Thompson Twin just because you like the Thompson Twins, but Cam Whitmore here is really my second option for them. Uh, a really, really tough shot maker. Now, he wouldn't fit in probably the best with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr., which is why you're going to need to probably move on from KPJ if you do bring in Cam Whitmore, but it'll be, I mean, it'll be interesting. Um, to see what happens, what they do if Amin Thompson does go off the board. Because in that case, you get one of either Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller, and then you're looking even better um, than if you were to get Amin Thompson. So, 19, there's a few options here. Derek Whitehead out of Duke, although he'll probably end up falling a little further. Um, I like him a lot. Very young, coming off injuries, which has dropped his stock. So, the Rockets will probably stay away at number 19 but maybe they maybe they take the bait if not um you got other guys like jet howard maybe maxwell lewis falls jalen hood shafino Derek lively a ton of guys you could look at at 19 that have a lot of upside this is a very deep draft class bryce sensible is another guy here that i think they could go after very efficient score not the most efficient from three but there's not too many prospects in this draft that are like super efficient from three other than like grady dick brandon miller uh, Jordan Hawkins. Great frame on him at about six foot six, two thirty five. He's a monster. Um, and he will bully you down low. Now, as I said, they have a lot of team options this summer. Jalen Green, Alpern Singu, and Josh Christopher, and Yuzma Garuba. We'll start with Jalen Green, obviously the best. Um, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You're bringing him back. He is your franchise player, and you're giving him any amount of money that he wants. Um, Alpern Singun has been huge. He's been really, really good. Um, this is a no-brainer as well. You're going to accept this and move on very happily. Uh, Yuzman Garuba, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you can accept it, give him one more year to prove himself. He hasn't really done much in two years, but he was seen as a developmental piece, so I guess you give him a couple of years to continue and try and develop. Um, and then Josh Christopher, uh, Except probably, I mean, you're going to bring all of your young guys back. So that, that that's what you got there. Uh, now, the cap space situation. They have $66 million. Here's who I want them to go after. Um, I want them to probably move on from KPJ and, or move him to the bench and go get a Fred Van Vliet. Now, if they do take him in Thompson, then you don't need a man, uh, Fred Van Vliet as much. So maybe you, you throw this out the window. But if you do go the Cam Whitmore route, Fred Van Vliet would be a big guy for you to go get. 
Not the most efficient and a bit of a smaller guard, so maybe you would bring him off the bench anyway and let him in start. But, you know, there's there's one way to spend your money. Um, also, good rebounder for how small he is. But like I said, is he really going to help you win a championship? I mean, he has in the past, but I think he would be better served as a six-man versus, like, the franchise point guard. He is not big enough. I mean, unfortunately for him, he's not big enough to be a franchise point guard in the modern NBA. TJ Warren, 7.5 points and 4 rebounds this year in 15 minutes a game on a couple of different teams. Um, but I think he would be a nice veteran piece to have come off the bench at the 3. Uh, former 20-point-per-game guy on good efficiency. Those two additions wouldn't even really dent into their cap space. They'd still have like $40 million over the next few years. But just a couple of guys that I think you can bring in. Now the new coach, they got Ime Udoka from the Boston Celtics. And I think this is a good hire. Uh, was he who y'all wanted? I believe so. Um, in my opinion, that'd be a good coach. Coming over from the Celtics, I mean, he was a great groomer of young wings. And you got Jalen Green here. You also have... Uh, Jabari Smith Jr., you could be taking Cam Whitmore. Honestly, it was anybody but Steven Silas at that point. Uh, the lineups for next year, this is what they're looking like. Um, I'm still thinking they're going to get him in at number four. Jalen Green at number at the two, and then K.J. Martin at the three. You could go a couple different ways with that, maybe Jay Sean Tate. But K.J. Martin, he seems to be happier now in Houston than he was, say, the beginning of the year. Um, and then you still got Jabari Smith Jr., and Alfred Singun. And like I said, I expect Jabari Smith Jr. and Jalen Green to flourish under Ime Udoka. Like I said, he groomed two really good wings in Boston. Who's to say he can't do it again in uh, Houston? Now, I'm not saying he was the sole reason for the Bs being that good, or the Jays being that good. Sorry, not the Bs. The Jays being that good. But you know, he, he really helped them last year, and they broke out. And then Jabari and Alpen Singer in the front court. It's a good young lineup, I think. You know, they're still a couple of years away from being serious contenders, which is why maybe you go out and you get a couple of veterans in free agency. Um, don't forget Tari Eason. I really like Tari Eason a lot. Uh, Yuzman Garuba, I guess, at the backup five. Maybe you spend some money on a backup center in free agency, but Jay Sean Tate is there at the backup three. You got Fred Van Vliet and Kevin Porter Jr. as your guards off the bench. That's some good scoring. And then with Tari and Jay Sean Tate, that's elite defense as well. Um, both of them can do a little bit of anything, kind of swing men, honestly. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what the bench would be looking like. Like I said, you could go out spend some money on a backup center. Um, but overall... I mean, you got nine really, really solid players here. And like I said, they're probably a year or two out from really seriously competing in the NBA Eastern or Western Conference, but that that's a great foundation going forward for this Rockets team. Now, the others uh, that I did not mention in these lineups, you got Ty Ty Washington, who I think can still develop into a really, really nice backup point guard at the NBA level. Really liked him at Kentucky. He's great in the pick and roll. You got Josh Christopher, who you're bringing back on that team option. I think he's going to be good in um, Houston, given an opportunity. He's going to be good somewhere, given opportunity. The talent is there. And then Tony Buckets, TJ Warren, who I believe is still yet to turn 30. Um would be a nice veteran piece to have off that bench. Maybe you play him at the backup three, although you're still trying to develop your young talent. So, oh, and then also you have your late first round draft pick in Derek Whitehead or Bryce Sensible or someone else, obviously, Jet Howard, maybe Maxwell Lewis. I don't know. But yeah, with all of being said, that's going to be it for today's video. That is what I would do if I was the Houston Rockets, drafting him in Thompson, bringing in like a Fred Van Vliet in a backup center, and then TJ Warren. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Make sure to like button and hit the subscribe button. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.